Hey, good morning, folks, or good afternoon, actually. Uh, getting a little bit of a late start here today, uh, coming at you <coughs> with this week's market wrap. Kind of under the weather today, so getting a bit of a late start. But I think it's important to go through uh, what's going on in the markets and you know, kind of try and see what we can decipher for next week. So. I know that I'm probably beginning to sound like a broken record. I, I've been uh, very cautious and uh, felt as though we were coming up into some significant areas of price resistance, 200-day uh, moving averages, and uh, some other areas that typically would act as a fairly good uh, resistance. And the markets continue to power higher. And, you know, last week we talked about the fact that we were going to have Draghi and that could be a catalyst. And, you know, you've got the OPEC thing coming up next week. And next week we also have our own Fed uh, that will be uh, presenting. So we've got another uh, potential catalyst coming out next week. And one of the things that has really helped the markets uh, with this move is, is the fact that we've got a fairly significant bounce in oil. And if oil continues to stabilize or strengthen, we could see more positive action uh, in the markets. Now, listen, I wrote in my blog on Friday that uh, sometimes your perception of how things should be or how the markets should react uh, isn't the way that the markets react, right? And oftentimes they do the exact opposite. So, you know, if, if you think about what Draghi did this week and the fact that he, you know, brought out the bazooka, you would have thought that the euro would have tanked and the dollar strength would have gone crazy. And uh, with the dollar going crazy, you would think the commodities like oil and gold would have tanked. And initially... Uh, that is what happened. It actually looked like everything was going to roll over and then boom, uh, everything reversed and we powered higher. You know, the markets, that's what they do, right? They test your resolve. Um, how, how, how confident are you that, you know, your thesis is going to play out and, and the markets will test that resolve. So let's just start going through, uh, the charts and I, this is the busy chart that I have up here. I've got uh, the Bollinger Bands and a lot of the moving averages, but I, I, I think it's important to show you things in this chart because of the fact that we were coming up into an area of resistance, price resistance, and we're able to uh, close above that, right? And we close nearly at the highs in the NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500, the IWM. So, you know, a lot of people are looking at things and saying, we're overdone. We've moved too far too fast. But, you know, we don't necessarily have to have a big drop in price. We can just consolidate and work things off through time. And this week in particular, a lot of the action was in the first, you know, five minutes or first, I shouldn't say five minutes, but the first 15, 20 minutes of the market open and then for the remainder of the day a lot of choppy action because there's just not a lot of conviction on either side and I think because of the fact that we've had such a tremendous move in such a short period of time you have people that are really cautious about going long with any kind of uh, you know significant plays right so we've got the NASDAQ which uh, actually had a nice little move on Friday. You know, we're not, I guess here's the thing that I really want to, uh, to highlight is the fact that we are not at, at an extreme. We've actually consolidated a bit, right? We've built a little bit of a base and now, you know, we haven't pierced the upper Bollinger Band. We haven't gone parabolic. So is there a chance that we could continue to move higher? Absolutely, there is a chance that we can move higher. Uh, do I think that, you know, fundamentally all these things make sense? They don't. Uh, I think that the earning season wasn't as uh, good as I had hoped that it would be. I think I've seen a lot of 
negative things within earnings. I've talked about that in the last couple of videos, but that doesn't mean anything. The market is going to do what the market wants to do, and we just have to play what's in front of us. So as I said, you know, the first couple of, you know, the first half hour, 45 minutes has presented some nice trading opportunities with uh, stocks like VCell and uh, BTU and uh, Mac. I mean, there were several stocks that provided great trading, uh, short-term trading opportunities. But for me personally, this is a very difficult market to want to get long any type of swing or long-term play. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've been saying for the last several weeks that uh, this is a time that if you, you know, if you've got profits, you want to start locking them in building some cash. Now listen, things could continue to rip higher, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm not, I'm going to change my strategy or my focus. I do feel as though we've moved too far too fast, but things can stay irrational for longer than people can stay solvent. So uh, for me, I would much rather start locking in some profits. Like I've said, you don't need to sell your entire position, sell some of it, book some of that profit, and put the cash on the sides. I know it can be painful not to participate in something that continues to rip higher, but if you still have a small position, you're still participating, right? Uh, and hold on to that cash because nothing goes straight up, nothing goes straight down. You will get an opportunity to pick things up at lower prices. So the NASDAQ, we've talked about that. Let's take a look at, uh, this one is kind of interesting here. So, you know, this is the, uh, the, the bearish biotech. And one of the things that I've been saying for the last several weeks is that, you know, we need the biotech sector to participate. And it's still it's sitting within a bear market, right? The IVB, let's take a look at the IVB. What's interesting is that the this BIS came up into this trend line and found some resistance there and seems to be pulling back. And it actually looks as though it could roll over. So if the IBB does all of a sudden participate, uh, you know, that could be what gives us the next leg higher. And that's something that you want to be aware of. Uh, the other thing that I noticed, you know, I pointed out last week, the EEM, a lot of the, uh, uh, overseas markets uh, were looking as though they had gotten parabolic and maybe were a bit overextended, but they had little pullbacks and then started consolidating and actually closed uh, fairly strong on Friday. So let's look at this IBB, right? This 270 area really uh, continues to be an area of resistance. You know, it gets up here and then it pulls back. <clears throat> and now it looks as though we're getting ready to curl and we could potentially take out this area. If that happens, if the IBB does make a decent move, it could be a strong catalyst for the overall markets and take us higher. So the other interesting thing that is happening, so let's just take a look at this EEM real quick, right? We pierced the upper Bollinger Band. Uh, we pulled back, but we didn't have a huge sell-off. We just had a slight pullback, and now we seem to be climbing higher again. However, we are coming into an area of price resistance, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the EEM. Uh, let's take, that's the India, right? Same thing, Pierce, the upper Bollinger Band, consolidating, uh, working off some of that overbought condition and looking to possibly head higher financials had a really nice move. I mean, look at this move that we've had in a very short period of time. And that's why everybody seems to be on the same page that, you know, this is overdone. And, you know, there were a lot of people, including myself, that felt as though the markets were in the beginning of a bear market. And um, earnings were kind of justifying that things were not looking all that great. But, you know, here we are. Uh, making some pretty impressive moves higher. Like I said, it tests your resolve. How how sure are you that we are in a bear market? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of people that if they're sticking to their guns, they're really experiencing a lot of pain right now. 
That's why sometimes cash isn't really a bad position to be in, right? It's uh, uh, it's safe, and sometimes safe is the best way to play it. This is a very challenging market, I think, in terms of trading because there's not a lot of trend. Uh, the volatility has gotten ripped out of the marketplace. We've got some 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 uh, complacency that's setting in. There's not a lot of fear because, and typically, you know, we're seeing a lot of fear when, when the market is, is tanking and we're just not seeing a lot of that. We'll take, we'll take a look at the VIX in a minute, but look at the, uh, the financials, you know, we're coming up into an area of price resistance and support. We close right at the high of the day. We're not out of the upper Bollinger Band. We actually consolidated a bit. So it does technically look as though we could we could climb higher. Uh, let's take a look at the FXI, which is the China. So, you know, here's what's interesting about this. Look at this long-term trend line. It's finally broken above it and it's consolidated a little bit and it looks as though maybe it wants to go higher. The other thing that's, that we uh, uh, that I find very interesting is we've got the market climbing and we've got gold, which continues to show strength. So I keep asking myself, what is gold telling us? What are you know? And, and we just have an, a lot of interesting dynamics that are happening within this market. You know, typically gold going up, oil going up would not be good for the markets. And for some reason, we are joined at the hip with oil right now that if oil goes up, you know, that's a good thing, right? And the markets move higher. Uh, part of the fact that we had such a big move was the fact that we had a pretty big short squeeze within the oil sector. And that could continue. Uh, so gold is interesting. You know, it, it has pierced the upper Bollinger Band, gold and the gold miners, it's pierced it, but it is consolidating. It looks as though, uh, you know, it, usually when gold breaks down, it, it breaks down really, really hard. And we haven't had that kind of breakdown in the in the miners or in uh, gold. So uh, I would suggest that it's it's fairly uh, challenging to get real real negative on the gold miners and gold itself unless you see a really high volume, uh, big time breakdown. And we're just not seeing that. We're seeing it kind of consolidate fine. You know, if it breaks below, if gold breaks below 117 with any kind of conviction and volume behind it, uh, that could be the beginning of gold rolling over and potentially come down into the 114, 115 area, something like that. Uh, the cybersecurity sector has been, you know, we, we've talked about it. And look at this move that it's made. It had this big move, right? And now it's consolidating. And we actually closed right on the high on Friday. Coming up into a long-term trend line, we'll see if we consolidate and then break through that trend line. That would actually be fairly healthy uh, and something I think you want to pay attention to. High yield. Look at what high yield did. So <clears throat> we took out this trend line here. Look at the move that high yield has made, right? We, in a very, very short period of time, and it actually looks as though it wants to go higher. And this could just be simply because there are so many people that were trying to, you know, trying to ride it down. I and mean, it looks as though you've got some money uh, really pouring back into the high yield. So broke over this trend line, see if we consolidate here and potentially move higher. Talked about the IBB already. Let's take a look at the IWM. Actually, let's look at the, the home builders real quick. Another, I mean, all of these look very similar, right? We had this big, tremendous run, and then we consolidated a little bit, and we broke out again on Friday, closing above uh 100-day moving average, closing above the 200 EMA. So, you know, all these areas that we felt as though might act as resistance, uh, we have been able to overcome. So IWM 
basically the same thing. Had a nice move up into some price resistance and consolidated, had a little bit of a pull, consolidated, and now looking as though we may be able, may be trying to take out uh, this prior high right here uh, and take out 110, which I think would be fairly significant if we did. The IYR, I mean, look at this, closed above this trend line with conviction nearly at the high of the day. <clears throat> And it, it's difficult not to, as you're looking at these charts, right, it's difficult not to say, well, geez, maybe things are just a bit more bullish than, than we anticipated they would be. Look at the IYT, the transportation index. We started to see a pullback. It made sense that we would see that uh, coming up into a 200-day moving average, but basically worked off the overbought condition, consolidated a little bit, and now look as though we may want to power higher how much more we have in us in this run is anybody's guess. But the fact that everybody is so bearish or has such a bearish take on the markets, a lot of times what the markets will do is continue to climb that wall of worry, right? We continue to move higher even though everybody and their brother is saying, man, this just doesn't make sense. We've had too big of a move. But if you think about it, think about that move that we had from February or from from the beginning of the year, and how it you know it was just nonstop every day we were getting pounded, and now we've got earnings season for the most part behind us, and there just really isn't a whole lot from from the earnings uh, point of view that's going to impact the market until the next earnings season. So now we've got the Fed that we can look at. We've got, you know, Mario Draghi who broke out the bazooka. And it's difficult to fight central banks, but that doesn't mean that things are good, right? It doesn't mean things are healthy. And uh, that's, that's where the struggle comes in. So let's take a look at uh, LABD. Uh, which is the three times bear on the IBB, which kind of looks like, you know, we're making, it doesn't kind of, it we do. We're, we're making some higher, uh, lower highs, and we're making some lower lows, right? So uh, if this breaks down, we could be seeing, you know, the IBB actually make uh, a fairly positive move. Look at Labu, right? It's, it, I mean, it's right here. It, it, have we based enough? here that when we when we finally take out this trend line could it be a really powerful move higher i think it could uh it, you know it doesn't seem like we want to go down and make new lows at least right now it just looks like we've consolidated we've made a base and we're getting ready to potentially take out that long-term trend uh mid caps actually look pretty darn good right i mean look at what we did on mid caps we came and tossed tested this long-term trend line. We bounced right up off of it and haven't looked back since. Uh, and now this is pretty healthy action. We're, we're consolidating within the Bollinger Band uh, at the 200-day uh, EMA, closed at the high of the day. It looks as though we want to go higher. But for me, it's all about short-term trades for right now. I do have some swings that I'm holding on to, and of course I have my long-term portfolio that is really appreciating this run that we're having but you know I'm anywhere where I'm feeling a little fat and profits I'm locking them in right now um, so uh, one one thing that I think is uh, fairly interesting is the agricultural sector could be a, an, a sector to keep an eye on uh, broke this long-term trend line uh, consolidating a bit getting ready to take out a key price price area um, and I think you know you're coming up into that season that could be good for the ag company so I think you want to keep an eye on that sector let's take a look at uh, you know we talked about uh, Russia all right had a nice little pop it's been consolidating it closed nearly at the high uh, on Friday, potentially take out 13. Like I said, Russia very tied to oil. So if oil continues to show strength uh, or move higher, then you would think that the Russell uh, 
bull ETF for Russia would follow. SMH closed right at the high of the day on Friday. Okay, uh, it does have a ways to go before it would come up into this trend line resistance here, somewhere around 55 or so. But SMH uh, is looking like it wants to move higher. S&P 500, we closed over the 200 day simple moving average on Friday. Uh, we're not out of the upper Bollinger Band. You know, are we looking at coming up into some resistance somewhere around 2045, somewhere in that area? It does appear as though we would be, uh, but this is, you have to, you just, you can't deny that this has been a pretty uh, impressive move. And I think it's catching a lot of people off guard. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the T2108 and T2107 percentage of stocks above, above the 200 day moving average. You know, listen, we can get much higher, right? We're not overbought until you get up into the 70, right? 70 range. And we're quite a ways away from that. So things could continue to climb higher. What's concerning to me is the T2108, which is the percentage of stocks that are above their 40 day PMA. And we're, we're off the charts here. Uh, you know, up in the 85 range. And that's why I've been suggesting that, you know, we need to, we need to be careful up here. And this isn't the time that you want to start loading up on swings and going long or loading, loading up on long-term holds. I think we're overdone. I think we've moved too far too fast, but that doesn't mean that we can't stay up there for a bit longer. Uh, let's see. Take a look at the TLT real quick. Uh, close right at the low on Friday, right? So uh, looking as though maybe we come down and test this 125 area where there's some significant uh, price support. Let's take a look at, uh, you know, volatility. It got sucked right back out of the market, right? TVX and UVXY, which have been really fun to to trade when when there's a lot of fear in the marketplace, uh, not so fun right now. Okay, and looking as though they could head lower. We haven't gotten to the extremes yet, right? We haven't gotten out of the upper of uh, out of the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, you can see what happens when you get those extremes, right? When you pierce the Bollinger Band, and this looks very controlled. It looks as though maybe we could come down even lower in the UVXY, right? Oil consolidating, right? Moving averages starting to flatten out. Look at the, the 50 EMA starting to flatten out. Um, and if oil continues to move higher, I, I, I would think you're going to see some nice moves within the oil sector. And that could be good for the overall indexes. Uh, the one thing I would would little bit of caution here is when we get into these, you know, the lower between 11 and 16, uh, a lot of times volatility doesn't stay down here for that long, right? With this complacency. So it does look as though maybe we could pull it down, break below the 616 area uh, and get down here and maybe test this 11 or 12 area. Uh, Keep an eye on volatility. I think it's extremely important um, to pay attention to volatility. And like I said, when you get into this area, this is, you know, there's starting to be some complacency. There just isn't any fear. And oftentimes it doesn't stay down here for very long. So just pay attention to the VIX. And let's, let's, Go to some individual sectors. Uh, you know, there's the biotech, right? Kind of an interesting little deal here. I mean, we pulled back. We keep testing this little trend line. Maybe it's starting a new trend up. We'll see. Uh, home builders, very strong. All these charts look really, really similar. We had this huge move. We're consolidating. And now it looks as though uh, we can go higher. So the Fed will be interesting next week. 
Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if the OPEC meeting is next week, but that that could have an impact. Um, let's see what else we've got going on. Energy. Now, at a key price area and uh, closed nearly at the high. Worked a little bit of worked a little bit of the overbought condition off, and you know it looks like now we're getting ready to curl back up. We could head back up and test this long-term trend line here. You know, if we wind up breaking this long-term trend line with real conviction, uh, <laughs> things could get a little nutso in the whole energy space. Um, XLF, like I said, financials looking pretty strong. Closed nearly at the high of the day. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Fed if they raise the interest rate next next uh, week or if they actually push that out but indicate that they're planning to raise the rate in the next meeting. So that will definitely uh, impact the markets in some way, I do believe. Industrials looking really strong. However, they are coming up into a long-term trend line. Utilities, you know, another thing. So... <laughs> Utilities continue to power higher, right? This this area that typically is considered an area of safety, and it just continues to power higher. Healthcare, uh, I do think that healthcare is one of the most beaten up sectors, and I do think that uh, potentially it looks as though we could come up and test uh, in this seventy dollar range, test this this trend line here. I do think there are quite a few names within the healthcare sector that have been beaten up. Consumer discretionary. Again, we had a nice pop closed above the 100-day uh, moving average and closed above the 200-day simple moving average. Much more uh, sustained rally than I actually thought we would get. Look at this move in XME. Tremendous move in XME. The mining, right? We did pierce the upper Bollinger Band, but now it looks as though we are consolidating for potentially a, a, another move higher. And look at what we've closed over. We've closed all over all this resistance, 200 EMA, 200 simple moving average, right? All this, the short-term uh, moving averages are sloping up. So uh, XME still looks like a place that you want to pay close attention to. Uh, oil and gas uh, exploration, XOP, pierced the upper Bollinger Band, worked the, off the overbought condition, and looks as though we're getting ready to, to test this right here. Retail, surprisingly, uh, surprising to me. I mean, we this was one of the biggest concerns that I had had, right? We we broke this long-term trend, trend line with you know, solid conviction, and uh, now we've, we've reclaimed it. You know, I thought we have reclaimed it a little too fast, but we've reclaimed it. Now we're coming up into some price resistance here, uh, but it looks really, really strong and uh, hard to fight the tape, hard to fight the trend. It looks as though we could go higher with the XRT. So, you know, look, I have been fairly bearish. I thought that we were I, in the beginnings of a bear market, and I still things see things fundamentally that are very concerning. But you can't fight the tape. You can't fight the Fed. Uh, you know, Draghi did break out the bazooka. We'll see what our Fed uh, has to say next week. But this is not, like I said, a time where you start loading up on a bunch of names. For the long term, it's really, I think, more of a trader's short-term trade type market. Um, like I said, it's, it's not that I haven't taken some swings. I, I mean, I took a swing and fit uh, this week and almost got blown out of it. Uh, but it managed to, I managed to stay in. And, uh, you know, here's a stock that's been beaten up significantly. This is, you know, pretty ugly chart, actually. But, uh, you know, I have a target for 1550 basically on this stock and see if maybe we can get that next week. I will be doing my stocks to watch video for next week, uh, tomorrow morning. Remember, this is uh, spring forward, so you have to move your clocks forward uh, tonight. So, it, it actually, I will be doing the, the ticker TV tomorrow at 
8 a.m. Vegas time, but it'll really be 9 a.m. Vegas time. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, um, looking forward to, to uh, doing the Stocks to Watch video tomorrow. Hope you can make it. Uh, and that's it, folks. Like I said, uh, you know, as bearish as I would like to be, uh, it's hard to deny how strong this market is. And it does appear as though uh, we may even go higher. So that's where I'm at. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning.